South Carolina trying to move over 500 in conference play. They can do that by taking down Arkansas. Here's the ball coach. They won a big game last week against undefeated Tulsa. Uh, a very close game. So uh, we, we look forward to probably a close game to see if we can make a play or two in the fourth quarter or earlier uh, to try to try to put these guys away. But uh, Arkansas, uh, uh, very aggressive, new coaching staff there and so forth, and uh, looking forward to seeing if we can play well this Saturday afternoon. All right, Glenn, go ahead and open up. What's different about them defensively, Coach? A lot different, a lot different. Uh, their former coordinator, Reggie Herring, I think is with the Cowboys now, and uh, they were pretty much a man-to-man, -man, bump and run team. And now they play a lot of coverages. They, they, they play a bunch of different zones and zone blitzes and as well as man-to-man -man also. So uh, they probably play as many coverages as most anybody we've played this year. So multiple, multiple defense, I guess you would call that. And then, of course, uh, Bobby Petrino has been known as an outstanding offensive coach in college ball at Louisville. And Casey Dick uh, last week. I think was within two yards of setting the school passing record. So they throw it around successfully, and uh, their offense has scored a bunch of points this year. I don't know exactly where they're ranked. Anybody know? I had one. Huh? Ninth in scoring offense. How about total? What are they in total? Uh, fifth. fifth. Fifth, okay. That's about, that's about right, not bad. Steve, uh, senior, did mm -hmm. and all. Uh, I saw Bobby Wallace is on the list of guys to be honored before the game. Mm -hmm. is, is he moving on? And then Beecher was not on there. Do you expect him to come back? I haven't seen that list. I guess that's the best way to see that. But uh, any player that potentially may not be back should be on the list. He, sh he should be on there. So. If he comes back and he goes through the senior day twice, uh, that's okay. <clears throat> but we would hope uh, uh, all those uh, potential last year guys uh, would be honored before the game. Steve, do you have a uh, relationship with Coach Petrino of your dad, Frost? Not too much. No, he's, he's pretty much a West Coast guy, yeah. California guy. Uh, I think I met him for the first time at the SEC head coaches meeting in February probably was first time I told him I gave him two years before he'd be back to college but he didn't last one so we sort of laughed about that a little bit yeah did you ever did you ever think that Kenny McKinley could be this kind of receiver all-time leading receiver kind of guy yeah uh, you, you never know um, but uh, Kenny uh, is a very good player who uh, has really learned how to play also. Uh, but he's a natural. He's got excellent hands, quickness, and uh, knows how to get open, knows how to play. He, he's a natural in there. Uh, did we think he would be the all-time record holder? No, I don't guess we, uh, we probably thought that. Um, sort of interesting. He was, he was already committed when I was hired here. And I asked him one time, how is it that you'd already committed wanting to play wide receiver? And he said, well, coach, I read in the paper that you were coming. So he, <laughs> he read in the paper I was coming. He called Coach Cooper, I think, and, and committed. Uh, but anyway, he was already committed. And uh, he was a little skinny guy back then. He's still not real big, but he is uh, definitely big enough to play and, and big enough playing the NFL also. So we'll, we'll wish him the best when this year is over. Right now, it looks like South Carolina has found a quarterback with Steven Garcia leading the Gamecocks to yet another win, this time a blowout win over the Tennessee Volunteers. Now they go up against an Arkansas team that's coming off a win against Tulsa in which they shut down one of the top offenses in the nation. What do you think that means now with this young quarterback, Steven Garcia, for South Carolina? Well, with Steven Garcia, what you're going to get out of him that maybe David Johnson didn't bring to the table for Tulsa is you're going to see some athleticism and the ability to create and improvise maybe if things break down up front. Steven Garcia gives this football team a chance. Not only can he make all the throws downfield, 
but he can do some things that are kind of exciting when he has to buy a second chance and give the offense an opportunity to move the chains without just sitting in the pocket and getting rid of the football without being rushed. And with that defense the Gamecocks have right now, you're looking at a South Carolina team could potentially be 7-3 and three at the end of this weekend and a team that is so good on defense and with a quarterback that's coming along, South Carolina could close yeah. out this year and look really, really good, especially with how you've seen Clemson playing to this point. Well, and it also brings a team together because if your defense is playing as well as South Carolina's has and they can't convert first down on third down, mm -hmm. they can't do the little things, it makes your defense get really upset with you. So now that they have a guy like Garcia, it gives oh, yeah. them a chance to rest, it gives them a chance to be healthy, and you can see now that South Carolina defense is playing very well at the end of the season. So don't fool yourself. A good quarterback no. is, a, is a defense and a special team's best friend to me. Now for Arkansas, again, mentioned this win, coming off the win against Tulsa, Bobby Petrino. There were expectations for him, but they weren't the highest because of all the losses with this Arkansas team. How well are they starting to play right now? They had that brutal stretch against four ranked opponents. They won one, but now what do you think? I'm extremely impressed with this football team. If you go back and you watched Arkansas the first three or four weeks of the season, you had the same thought process that you had about Virginia, that they were one of the worst football teams in college football. They've settled down a little bit. I think the players have really started to buy into what Bobby Petrino's preaching offensively. Casey Dick has come out of nowhere to all of a sudden become a very efficient passer. They're playing some young freshmen, not only in the backfield, but out wide that have enhanced their offensive makeup. Remember, this is a team that for 10 years under Houston Nutt was a run-oriented, pound-the-ball-away-at-you type of football team, not a team that can line up, spread you out, and create mismatches. They're starting to turn into that. Now that the quarterback's playing good, they're a different football team. The best thing for a coach to see in a young team is confidence, and that's clearly yeah, what the ball club without has. Doubt. I mean, they have the confidence. And to Tom's point, if you're a running team, running team, running team, it takes you almost two full seasons before you can really know the passing game well. And to find the quarterback and now finding some young guys that are making plays, hey, don't don't fool yourself. Arkansas may turn that corner. And they got Bobby? Ryan Mallett mm -hmm. and Tyler Wilson waiting in the wings at quarterback. The future looks bright for Arkansas. But with the running game, Bobby Petrino has always said a big part of his spread offense is having that running attack to set up the pass. And Michael Smith, the little running back, having a very, very good season. Maybe not on the level of Darren McFadden and Felix Jones, but still racking up yards on the ground for the Hogs out of Arkansas. Struggled against since joining the lead in 1992. Dennis Johnson is back to receive for the Razorbacks. Ryan Suckup hammers it. This one going all the way into the end zone, about eight yards deep. And the Razorbacks will wisely take it at the 20. First and 10, our first look. See what the Petrino brothers have dialed up for second and 30. Dick has time, fires in the flat, complete at the 10. Back in as Spurrier continues to rotate quarterback. Smelly in trouble, and he is swallowed up. Showing off the leg. 10-0 our score. Backs. Spreading it out a little bit, giving to Michael Smith, who's weaving his way through traffic, picking his way through the diminutive tailback, and watch him move here. Yeah, gets good blocking up front, and he's just so quick. He's not a big guy, only 5'7", about 175 pounds, and the SEC's leading yeah, rusher. Their biggest problem has been stopping the run. Dead last in the SEC. It's a direct snap to Eric Baker who wrestles Davis to his right. Garcia rolling out, looking downfield. Garcia lobs it, intercepted at the 50 by the Razorbacks. That's Dallas Washington. In the areas you take a look at it here and he gets nothing on the pass. You take a look at his eyes and what he's seeing. There's three white jerseys there. There's nowhere to go with that. And just put too much air underneath it. That's an easy pick in Arkansas. With well, Davis best. behind him. Davis to Davis, trying to find room off the left side, and he is smothered. So that's where I want to go. I want to play for Steve Spurrier in that offense as Mo Brown tackled behind him. Weird formation here. This is the old Emery and Henry as Smelly throws it left side. Complete the same, but a lot more dominating this year. Smelly looking to pass, finds McKinnon incomplete. Broken. I can't recall one of 25 yards or less. On first and 10, Dick with all kinds of time loads up and launches one deep and has a man wide open at the 25 and into the end zone for his touchdown. Yeah, he's the free safety, so he's not going to get much extra help back there. And again, Culver with the best speed, but he just loses him. He was running side by side with him and just slowed down a little bit. Don't know if he was expecting 
Now the pass to go somewhere else that didn't look like Casey Dick looked him off at all, and he delivers a strike. And he's got him beat by seven or eight yards, and that's just no contest. And, and like you said, he didn't look him off. There was no pump fake, and there's nobody coming in the middle of the field, so I'm rotating quarterbacks on virtually every play. Here's that wacky formation again. Pass incomplete. Third down and four. Again, a blitz by Carolina as Dick rolls out left and finds a wide open target near the side. More Carolina and Arkansas football here from Columbia on Sports Out. McKinley now five grabs, 105 yards. Mike Davis tries to lay the way for Katie McKinley to get those nine yards. Smelly under hot pursuit and does a nice job of just getting it away, not taking the sack. That's what Steve Spurrier has. A lot of fresh faces on this Arkansas team. Look at all those freshmen, 16 of them. You know, you've seen Florida State and Miami struggle this year with all the freshmen they had, and certainly Arkansas doing the same. Alabama's a little bit of a different story because they've got some. Again, play action, and this is an easy touchdown for Arkansas. Right. Cut the Gamecock lead to 6, 20 to 14, our score. Carolina's offense got to get oiled up and uh, limber again after watching that lengthy drive the last time. Here's man in motion as Jarius Wright to the top of your screen. Again on play action. Dick looking down, and there's a wide open man at the 40, past the 50. And out of bounds in Carolina territory. South Carolina defense looks a little off balance. Haven't brought as much pressure. Haven't been able to put any kind of pressure on Casey Dick really this half. And there's a strike in between a couple of defenders there and a big gain after the Kent as well. Something the Gamecocks aren't used to. I'm sure he can hear everything. It's the snap. Arkansas coming on a blitz. Throw over the middle from McKinley. And it around. Almost so in the game. Up. Clifton gathers. Out of the backups. Dustin Lindsay. Dick with time. Wide open now at the 30, 40, and then moving down the field. Davis between the tackles and tripped up. Nice job by Jamon Meredith on that last play, pulling from left to right. Same play here, except it's Davis. This time. They'll be pinning their ears back right here. It's Eric Norwood on the edge. He's already got three sacks. How about a fourth? Arkansas running the football. And the element of surprise working as weaving his way through tackles. Late Michael Smith injured in the second quarter. We haven't seen him since. And a slant pattern. A nice grab by great pack player, but he's been great this season. On third down, it's caught. And an initial tackle broken. I was lucky that Arkansas didn't hurry up that snap. Dick delivers. Caught right at the goal line. Play. Handoff to Barnett, and he burrows his going into the final two game stretch. Those fans would say absolutely. Bobby Wallace is crushed by the line again. 